Item number SCP-087 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-087 is located on the campus of The doorway leading to SCP-087 is constructed of reinforced steel with an electro-release lock mechanism. It has been disguised to resemble a janitorial closet consistent with the design of the building. The lock mechanism in the doorknob will not release until Bolts are applied in conjunction with counterclockwise rotation of the key. The inside of the door is lined with 6 cm or industrial foam padding. Due to the result of the final exploration, seek document 087-4. No personnel are permitted access to SCP-087. SCP-087 is an unlit platform staircase. Stairs descend on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircular platform for approximately 3 meters in diameter. The descent direction rotates 180 degrees at each platform. The design of SCP-087 limits subjects to a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights. A light source is required for any subject exploring SCP-087, as there is no lighting fixtures or windows present. Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have been shown to be ineffective, as SCP-087 seems to absorb excess light. Subjects' reports and audio recordings confirm the distress vocalizations for what is to be a child between the ages of and the source of the distress calls is estimated to be located approximately 200 meters below the initial platform. However, any attempts to descend the staircase have failed to bring subjects closer to the source. The depth of descent calculated from Exploration 4, the longest exploration is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-087 has an endpoint. SCP-087 undergone four video-recorded explorations by Class D personnel. Each subject conducting exploration has encountered SCP-087-1, which appears as a face with no visible pupils, nostrils, or mouth. The nature of SCP-087-1 is entirely unclear, but it has been determined that it is not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia and fear when faced with SCP-087-1, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or simply natural reactions. Addendum. Over a period of two weeks following Exploration 4, several members of the staff and students from the campus reported knockings at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds per knock coming from the interior of SCP-087. The door leading to SCP-087 has been fitted with 6 cm thick industrial padding. All reports of knocking have ceased. Authorized personnel may refer to document 087-1 through 087-4 for transcripts or explorations 1 through 4. Document 087-1 Exploration 1 D-8432 is a 43-year-old Caucasian male average build and appearance of unremarkable psychological background. Class D designation of result of demotion due to mishandling SCP. D-8432 is equipped with a 75-watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld recorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. At Control. D-8432 steps through doorway onto initial platform. Despite the wattage, the flood lamp only illuminates the first nine steps. The second platform is not visible. It's fucking dark. Is your flood lamp functioning properly? D-8432 shines the light out the door and onto the academic building's hallway. The light reaches significantly further. Yeah, it's working. It just won't light these stairs all the way down. Thank you. Please continue. D-8432 descends for 13 steps before reaching the second platform. The platform is in the shape of a semicircle with an apparently concrete surface and walls. There are no distinct markings aside from nondescript patches of dust, dirt, and wear consistent with that which is found in a typical concrete stairwell. D-8432 rotates 180 degrees to begin descent down the second flight, then pauses. Reason for stopping? You hear that? There's a fucking kid down there. Sounds like one. None of the described audio is feeding through the camera or mic at this time. Could you please describe the sound? It's young, either female or a very young boy. It's crying and sobbing and saying, Please. Help. Please. Yeah, it keeps repeating that and crying. Can you estimate its distance from the current location? Uh, fuck, I don't know, maybe 200 meters down? Please continue down the next flight. The subject descends another 13 steps. As he reaches the landing, audio of the child described is picked up. The child alternates between sobbing, wailing, and the words, please, help, and down here. The level of audio is consistent with D-8432's report of it being approximately 200 meters down. Can you still hear the crying? Yeah. We're picking it up as well. Please continue down. Stop if you notice any changes in the audio or environment. 
The subject descends another three flights of stairs before stopping. Keep going? Please. D-8432 continues another 17 flights, total of 22 flights before stopping. There is no visual change in the environment and each flight has been a consistent 13 steps. I'm not getting any fucking closer to the kid. Stereo audio confirms the crying noise has not increased in volume and reached approximately 200 meters below the subject. Noted. Please continue. The subject continues another 28 flights before stopping. 50 flights total. D-8432 is standing on the 51st landing, counting the initial ground-level landing. D-8432 is estimated to be 200 meters below the initial platform. 34 minutes have elapsed. The volume of the crying has not increased. I feel a little uneasy. You spent a long time in a dark, unknown stairwell. It's natural. Please continue. The subject hesitates before stepping down the next stair. As the subject moves forward, the flood lamp illuminates a face located approximately at the bottom of the flight. SCP-087-1. It appears to be the same size and shape as a human head, except it is lacking a mouth, nostrils, and pupils. The face is completely motionless, but is making direct eye contact, indicating its awareness of D-8432. Fuck! What the fuck is that? Shit! Holy fucking shit! What the fuck? Can you please describe what you see? It's some sort of fucking person face thing and it's fucking looking right at me. Fuck, fuck, fuck! It's looking right at me. Is it moving? <sighs> No, it's just staring at me. Fuck, 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 it's creepy. Please approach and further illuminate the entity. Fuck, 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 I don't want the fucking… The face jerks forward about 50 centimeters directly toward D-8432. Fuck, 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 fuck! D-8432 enters a panicked state and rapidly ascends SCP-087. D-8432 reaches the ground floor in 18 minutes, at which time he collapses and passes out. There is no sign of SCP-087-1. Review of the footage indicates an equal number of flights and steps ascending as descending. Audio of the crying and pleading remains the same volume until the last flight, at which point it ceases. Medical reports indicate collapse was a result of the rapid ascension of the stairs causing fatigue. Document 087-2 Exploration 2 D-9035 is a 28-year-old African-American male of strong build. Psychological background indicates no abnormalities except an extreme hatred for women. Subject has an extensive record of D-9035 is equipped with a 100-watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. at control. D-9035 is also equipped with a backpack containing 75 small LED lights with adhesive backs and battery lives of approximately 3 weeks. Lights turn on and off by compressing them. D-9035 shines the flood light down the first flight of stairs. Despite the extra wattage, the light does not illuminate beyond the ninth step. You want me to go down there, Doc? Please shine your flood light outside of SCP-087 to verify it is functioning properly. D-9035 shines the light into the hallway. Comparison with the footage from Exploration 1 confirms it is indeed brighter. Thank you. Please continue to the first landing. Hey, Doc. I don't know what you said and all, but I don't think I want to go there. Please continue to the first landing. Doc, look, I, as per our earlier conversation, please continue to the first landing. D-9035 pauses for 18 seconds, then descends 13 steps to the first landing and stops. Is that a kid? Please remove one of the adhesive lights and affix it to the wall on the landing. Doc, you hear that? Is that a kid down there? That's unconfirmed. Please affix an adhesive light to the wall and verify its functions. D-9035 hesitates, then removes one of the lights from his backpack and adheres it to the wall. He presses on the light and it turns on. Please turn off your flood lamp. D-9035 hesitates again before turning off the lamp. The LED light illuminates the landing but does not extend beyond the first step either way. Thank you. You may turn your flood lamp back on. Please continue to descend. At each landing, affix an LED light to the wall and turn it on. If you notice anything unusual, please report it. D-9035 turns the flood lamp back on, then descends the next flight of stairs. As he sets foot on the landing, the audio picks up sounds of pleading and crying, consistent with those of the first expiration. Can you still hear the previously reported audio? Uh, yeah. She sounds about 150, maybe 200 meters down. Am I supposed to get her? Look, Doc, I don't do good with kids. Please place the light and continue down until you notice anything unusual. The subject adheres the light to the wall and turns it on, then continues to the next landing. He adheres the third LED light to the wall and turns it on. D-9035 continues in this manner for the next 25 flights before stopping. I don't think I'm getting any closer to the kid, Doc. 
How far below would you estimate the source of the sound be? Same as before, 150, 200 meters down. Thank you. Please continue. D-9035 continues in the same fashion for the next 24 flights. At the 51st landing, he stops. Footage shows an arch gouge in the concrete wall, estimated to be approximately 50 cm long and 10 cm wide. The first step down from the landing appears to be completely smashed into rubble. You see that? Yes. Can you please describe what you see? Looks like something slashed the wall, and the step over here is all crumpled up and stuff. The slash mark looks really smooth. D-9035 touches the gouge mark. Yeah, smooth. Feels like glass. Thank you. Please continue down. Look, Doc, I think I've gone far enough. Please continue as per our agreement. I don't want to be doing this, agreement or not. D-9035 steps over the destroyed step and continues down the staircase. Nothing is notable at the next landing. D-9035 adheres the LED light to the wall and continues in the same fashion for another 38 flights. The sound of the crying and pleading still has not gotten closer. D-9035 is on the 89th landing and 74 minutes has elapsed from the beginning of the expiration. Subject is estimated to be 350 meters below the initial platform. I feel like the kid's just trying to lure me down here, Doc. I think it's time for me to… D-9035 stops talking and moving as the flood lamp illuminates SCP-087-1. The face is staring directly at D-9035, again indicating awareness of the subject's presence. Although SCP-087-1 appears to be unmoving, its location is 38 flights below the initial encounter in Exploration 1, indicating it is mobile. Is there a reason you stopped? Unresponsive. D-9035's breathing grows labored. SCP-087-1 remains immobile for an additional 13 seconds. SCP-087-1 blinks. D-9035 is yelling and incomprehensible. SCP-087-1 jerks forward until it is approximately 90 cm from D-9035. Subject turns and flees up the stairs. Please relax and calm down. Turn around. We need a closer look at the face. D-9035 ignores Dr. and continues rapid ascent. He continues to scream incomprehensibly. D-9035, can you hear me? Please slow down. D-9035 is unresponsive continues rapidly climbing the stairs. His screaming diminishes the babbling. After ascending 72 flights, D-9035 collapses on the 17th landing. D-9035, can you hear me? D-9035 is unresponsive, but labored breathing can be heard through the audio feed. For the next 14 minutes, D-9035 is immobile. The visual feed is black and audio picks up only the subject's breathing and continuous pleading coming from below. After 14 minutes and 32 seconds of unchanging visual and audio feeds, the sound of a rapid heartbeat not consistent with a human heartbeat and a low cracking noise is heard. Seven seconds later, D-9035 gasps and revives, continuing his ascent of the stairs rapidly and wordlessly. The heartbeat and cracking cease, and nothing abnormal is detected on the visual feed. He remains unresponsive. D-9035 exits SCP-087 and sits on the floor outside of the entrance. D-9035 then enters a canatonic state from which he has not yet recovered. Document 087-3 Expiration 3 D-9884 is a 23-year-old female average build in appearance. Psychological background indicates a history of depression. Subject has a minimal record of using excessive force to D-9884 is equipped with a 75-watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld recorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. at control. D-9884 is also equipped with a backpack containing 3.75 liters of water, 15 nutrient bars, and one thermal blanket. D-9884 stands on the ground level landing of SCP-087. The flood lamp illuminates only the first nine steps. LED lights placed on the wall during the last expiration are not visible. Please descend the first flight and examine the landing wall. D-9884 descends 13 steps and stops the landing. There is no trace of the LED light the location footage from Expiration 2 indicates it was placed. Yeah, um, it's just a dirty concrete wall. There's like nothing on it. No, wait. It's a little bit sticky right here. D-9884 indicates the spot on the wall the LED light should have been located. There's a child crying down here. She, She's begging for help and crying. Thank you. Please continue down the steps until you notice anything unusual. D-9884 descends. Upon reaching the next landing, audio of the crying child consistent with the prior two expirations picked up. No LED lights appear to be present on any of the landing walls. 
D-9884 continued with no incident until she reached the 17th landing. Ew, there's something on the ground here and it smells really bad. It's all sticky and stuck on my shoe. Ugh, it's so gross. Video feed confirms presence of substance occupying a space approximately 50 cm in diameter. Can you describe the scent? Uh, it kinda smells like old rusty metal and pee. Thank you. Please continue until you notice anything else. D-9884 continues to the 51st landing without incident. The 51st landing remains unchanged from the previous expedition, and similar observations are made. D-9884 is asked again to descend until anything unusual is noticed. Subject continues her descent until the 89th landing is reached. The video feed jerks and the subject yells. Ah fuck, there's a hole in the ground, I almost fell in. Video feed confirms the presence of a hole approximately one meter in diameter. The subject shines the floodlight down, revealing only blackness. Approximately four seconds pass and a light of an indeterminate distance down the hole flicks for approximately two seconds and then back off. There was a light down there. It's gone now, but it was on for like a second. Did you see it? Yes. Can you estimate the depth of this hole? No way, it's too deep. At least a kilometer. Like, way more than a kilometer. Thank you. Can you still hear the sounds of the child? Uh-huh. She still sounds far away. I don't feel like I'm getting any closer. It's like for every step I take, she takes one down. Please continue down until you encounter anything unusual. D-9884 continues to descend SCP-087 for approximately an hour, covering an additional 164 flights. She stops to rest on the 253rd landing, consuming one nutrient bar and several gulps of water. D-9884 is at an estimated 1.1 km below the initial landing, yet the sound of the child has not changed in volume. After pausing for four minutes, D-9884 resumes her descent, making no stops for an additional 216 flights. 1.5 hours later, D-9884 is on the 469th landing, an approximate 1.8 km below the ground level. I'm not getting anywhere. I think it's time went back. I mean, going down is one thing, but this is a long climb back. You have been provided with food, water, and blankets the last few 24 hours. Please continue down. No, I think I'm going to go back up. D-9884 turns towards the previous flight of stairs. I screams. SCP-087-1, the face, is directly behind D-9884, blocking her ascent. The face appears approximately 30 cm from the lens of the camera. Its eyes are fixed directly on the lens, this time looking not at the subject but the person viewing the video feed. The video feed glitches and freezes for four seconds, accompanied by a static-like screeching noise from the audio feed. It then cuts to bumpy visuals of D-9884 descending the stairs rapidly. D-9884, panicked and hysterical. It's been following me. This whole time it's been right behind me. Oh god, it's right behind me. It was looking right at me. Doctor, please do something. Please help me. Oh god, no. Please let it get away from me. No, please. I knew it would follow me. Help it make it leave. Please, no. It was looking at me. It was staring at me. It knew I was there. It's been watching me this whole time. Oh god, please help me. Oh no, please. This continues in a similar fashion until the end. D-9884 continues to scream and plead hysterically as she rapidly descends the staircase. The previously heard static-like screeching seems to overlay the audio feed, beneath which can still be heard the original sound of the crying child. Approximately 14 flights down, the video feed swings to show the area directly behind D-9884. The face is now approximately 20 cm from the camera lens. It is not staring at the subject, rather it is fixated on the camera lens, giving the illusion that it is making eye contact with those viewing the footage. It is important to note that since the sighting of SCP-087-1, the sound of the girl crying and pleading has been increasing in volume, indicating D-9884 is nearing the source. After an approximate 150 panic flights of descent with three visual confirmations of SCP-087-1 still in pursuit, D-9884 trips and appears to fall unconscious. Audio feed indicates strong proximity to the source of the crying. The static and screeching noise continue. Video feed shows yet another descending flight of stairs indicating D-9884 still had not reached the base of the stairwell. Twelve seconds of motionlessness pass before the face comes in full view of the camera, eye contact being made directly with the viewer. Audio and video feed cuts out and no connection is re-established.